fancy some butternut squash cake, Anna? It's gluten-free. Thanks, Lucy. Nice of you to remember I'm intolerant. How could anyone forget? <laughs> We're actually on a bit of a health kick ourselves, so I use dates instead of sugar, carob instead of chocolate, and instead of regular flour, gluten-free almond flour. Is there salt in here? <laughs> no. Oh, I must be tasting my own tears. <laughs> What are you going to do about this lollipop, man? Nothing. Hurting his feelings would be like slapping a puppy or something old and lovely and respected, like Judy Dench. <laughs> You're probably being a bit unreasonable anyway. You're not being unreasonable at all. Surely this man must be aware there's a childhood obesity crisis in this country. Obviously not, otherwise he'd change his name to the Courgette Man. <laughs> Although he would look a bit odd stopping the traffic with a massive courgette. Would you say something if it was Jack? Of course. But we don't walk Jack to school. No. We drive in the 500 yards from our house to the school gate, strapped into a top-of-the-range hypoallergenic booster seat in the back of a BMW designed to withstand a landmine blast. <laughs> I suppose we just love our child more. It's just so difficult to say anything to him. He's such a lovely old man. Well, then, talk to the organ grinder, not the monkey. Write an email to the council. It's a perfectly reasonable complaint. And I'm all about reasonable. And complaint. <laughs> Anna's right. Wow. I expect many things to come out of your mouth, Lee, especially when you're eating. <laughs> but not Anna's right. <laughs> we don't have to deal with this. Let the council do it. Yeah, but what if he knows it was us who complained? The last thing I want to do is sound like one of those hysterical parents who can't appreciate a nice gesture and are forever criticising people. I can feel you trying not to look at me, Toby. <laughs> no, uh, I was just staring into the abyss, <laughs> as usual. He won't know it's you who's complained, especially if you don't put your names on it. Are you sure this hasn't got salt in? I imagine there's natural salt in the kelp. Well spotted, Anna. What's kelp? It's a kind of seaweed. Oh. I thought it was an abbreviation for cry for help. <laughs> I hate doing this. Can't you write it? No, you're better at things like this. You'll word it right. Dear sir. That's wrong. <laughs> put dear sir, madam. I have. Did you put a slash? No, Lee. I put an emoji of a turnip. <laughs> dear sir slash madam, I... Put we. It's got more gravitas if it sounds like it's coming from more than one person. Do you actually know what gravitas means? Yeah, that's where gravy was invented. Just write it. <laughs> We are writing because we are curious. Don't put curious. I know we don't want to get him into trouble, but it's got to sound a bit like a complaint. Put by curious. You want me to say I'm by curious? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, we are by curious. By curious, we mean unhappy. No, I'm not saying unhappy, it's too harsh. I was going to put, we are curious as to whether our lovely lollipop man is breaking any rules by generously giving out lollipops to the kids. Do you want him to stop or get an OBE? <laughs> You've got to be a bit more assertive, Lucy. Fine. Dear sir slash madam and the bi curious, we are unhappy. Actually, put very unhappy. I will punch you. No, that's a bit too harsh. Don't put that. <laughs> what if I put unhappy but also understanding? Yeah, brilliant. What about this? Dear madam, sir madam and bi curious madam, <laughs> we are frickin' livid that one of your lollipop numpties is dealing out the sugar equivalent of crack cocaine. And when we say livid, we do, of course, mean completely fine about it. <laughs> do you know what? Why don't you write it? All right, I will. Dear sir. Slash madam. I know. 